Bird Sandra King Group, and I am your host for this special event. This is our second year coming together as a collaborative effort because this is not just something that I decided to pull together. I enjoy working with community partners. I really and truly believe that when we come together, we can accomplish so much more than we can do alone. And so for that reason, I reach out and build wonderful relationships with organizations and individuals who are doing great things in our community. Because if I expect to see things better, then I need to be a part of that business and not just looking from the outside and pointing fingers about what I don't see happening. And I hope that you feel the same and that's the reason why you're here today. Before we go any further, I would like to just tell you a little bit about Optimal Living Education and Retreats. That is a small business that I started just three years ago. It was during the global pandemic and I saw that individuals who were veterans, especially those older veterans, because I live with my dad who's 90 years old. He's a veteran, and he's a phenomenal gentleman. But let me tell you, during that pandemic, so many of our older Americans were locked up, isolated, and just missing the connection that we give when we come together. Now we all know it was a pandemic. My God, they told us over and over and over again to keep six feet apart and all those wonderful things that they told us to do to keep us well. But I happen to be a holistic health professional. And for the last 20 plus years, my work has been about touching people. <laughs> And you may not know this, but it is something that is really required for us to do if we expect to be healthy and whole. Because as human beings, we have this need, not just a desire, but a need for human connection. And if you didn't know that before the pandemic, you probably know it now. Because those individuals who had no one to interact with and connect with, Many of them shriveled up, and they're not here with us. Now, they might have put a, a title on what they say caused that person's demise, but I'm here to tell you that we have to have loving, nurturing touch as human beings to survive. Our immunity is impacted by our ability to touch and have healthy touch our brain functioning, our ability to interact with other human beings. All of these things are impacted by our touch or the lack thereof. And so Optimal Living Education and Retreats was kind of birthed out of that need to bring people together again. Even though we were being isolated, if you're being isolated in a home and you have five people who live under the roof of that home, and they're all in their own rooms, but they do come together to watch TV and that kind of stuff. Don't you know they're mixing and mingling already? So why would you be so disconnected when you're under the same roof? Well, it started happening before the pandemic even, because people have been growing further and further away from each other for some time now. And so I am here tonight to tell you that not only is touch important, but having individuals such as humanitarians in a community is equally important. Because someone had to go out in the community and say, listen, we need to come together. We need to get out of these homes. We need to get out and get into nature. We need to do some walks along the river walk. We have this beautiful river walk here, but I'm telling you, I'm, I know I'm not from here, but I thought it was the weirdest thing that people were not coming out just because someone said, stay six feet apart. 
So this business was founded from that. We were looking for a solution to the problem, and then we found a greater problem. We found that mental health was a serious challenge among veterans and their family members. And mental health is not mental illness. I see y'all looking at me. Ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm mentally well. <laughs> so that's what we're talking about. <laughs> we're talking about staying mentally well. And so what do you have to do if you want to stay mentally well? You have to do those things, like exercise you do for the muscles, right? Well, you have to exercise your mind and your way of thinking. You have to exercise your body and just get some more fresh air and expand your lungs and all those type of things. So I began to teach people more about the basics of what we have to have as human beings living and thriving in the world today. And so with that being said, I was also looking for opportunities to make a bigger impact and I found my partners over at VetFest. I gave my friend Leonard Morgan a telephone call. It was in January. I can't remember which year exactly. And I'm like, listen, the Spirit of God says to me that I need to connect with you and that we have some work to do. <laughs> picked up the phone and I'm like, okay, I know you probably think there's something wrong with me, but I'm just telling you, we need to do something. And through that conversation, this project was kind of birthed. We did the, vet, um, what do you call it, the Veterans Family Retreat together. It was phenomenal. Out in Callaway Garden, well, out in Pine Mountain. We did an amazing event out there. We had veterans that came from as far as Illinois, the Netherlands, um, somewhere else out in the east. We just had a great time. And it let me know that the veterans and families in this community love this idea of getting together, getting in nature, opening up and enjoying life more fully for the purpose of mental and physical health and well-being. So with all of that said, I am here with my partner from VetFest, Mr. Leonard Morgan. You'll hear a little bit more about him, and you'll get to know him a little bit more a little, a little later in the program. But I'm also here with some of my community partners, and one of them that I would like to ask to come up right now and say a few words to you guys is the Vice Chancellor of this wonderful university. This young lady I met a few years back Still just getting started with my business. <laughs> and I reached out for something else, some volunteer work that I do in the community. And we've kind of just stayed connected ever since then. So without further ado, I would like to introduce to some and present to many others the Vice Chancellor of Troy University right here in this campus, Dr. Vassar Mims. So, for Sandra, thank you so much for that wonderful, wonderful welcome. Welcome to the Troy University Phoenix City campus. It is my honor and privilege to welcome each of you here tonight. As for Sandra indicated, I serve as the campus vice chancellor for this particular location. If you are not familiar with Troy University, we are, and we have our roots in supporting the veteran community. And so it's fitting that uh, she and I have come together and that we have come forward to serve as a partner for this important recognition opportunity. Uh, so for Sandra indicated that I have 30 seconds, right? Just to, to give my spiel. And so, so again, we're, we, are, we are pleased to have you here. Troy University, under the leadership of Dr. Jack Hawkins Jr., who, by the way, is the longest serving president of a public four-year university in the United States. He is a veteran, in fact, he is a Marine. And, and so he sends his greetings as well. Uh, if he could be here, uh, he would certainly be here tonight. To the honorees tonight, we appreciate each of you and the service you have given to the world and to the local community. We could not do what we are able to do today without your service, so thank you. Woo! 
And finally, I encourage each of you, as Sandra indicated, getting involved. Um, the humanitarian spirit is something that we all should embrace, whether you are a veteran, whether you are a child, whether you are seasoned, it is our responsibility to give back. And so one of the, the, the things that I do very well, and it's a God-given talent, and that is to connect individuals with educational resources to ensure that they are able to meet their God-given talents. And so I encourage you, if you are interested uh, or have a family member or a veteran who wishes to return to school, come see us. Not necessarily to come to Troy. We've got multiple partners within our community. The idea is to get back into school so that each of you and each of us can be a key player as we make change for the future. So thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. <laughs> You want to take some time to get to know her. Not just tonight, but stop by the campus anytime, and especially for all of the amazing programming that they do here, because I can tell you that this is a campus like none other. We have done such, oh my God, amazing work in this community, out in the parking lot, out on the grass. You'll probably hear more about it later on. But I just want you to know that I hear so many people talk about what's wrong with the world, what's not going right, repeating all of the things that they see on the news. I'm asking you to think about normalizing what we're doing tonight, celebrating our humanitarians and those who give selflessly to support other human beings. Now, I'm not mad at the people who support taking care of the lost pets and the alligators and the polar bears and the, all of those things. We got great people who love taking care of animals and things like that. But let's normalize looking after other human beings because we are not separate as we think that we are. We really want. Now, I leave that with you. You can think about it more. But we are one body, and we need to take care of each other. Now, I am now being asked to introduce our keynote speaker for this evening. And I will read his bio because I want to make sure you get everything you need to know about this gentleman before he begins to speak. I know some people like to cut the bio short. But if you hear the bio, then you know who you're really listening to, and you can really connect a little more. Dominique Williamson was born in Kingston, Jamaica, and is the fourth of seven children. At age seven, he migrated to the United States and made his home in Fort Lauderdale, where he excelled as both a student and an athlete. After graduating from high school, he bypassed the opportunity to become a collegiate track athlete to fulfill his desire to serve his community. What? <laughs> During his military career, he held numerous leadership positions, which included Task Force Command Sergeant Major, Combat Aviation First Sergeant, and Flight Company First Sergeant. While deployed in Afghanistan, gas Afghanistan, he suffered some injuries that required him to be medically evacuated and placed in the Warrior Transition Battalion. During his two years in the Warrior Transition Battalion, First Sergeant Williamson held the position of the Soldier and Family Assistance Center non-commissioned officer in charge. As this wonderful officer in charge, he served as the military liaison for soldiers between the WTB and the SFAC. Now, I don't expect y'all to remember all those acronyms, but the military and the government has a lot of them. <laughs> he did that to provide advice and consultation to the SFAC director and staff on military matters. 
His duties also included performing outreach services to soldiers, family members, and providing consultation services to civilian agencies, and provides client referrals and advocacy services. He also conducted evaluations with wounded so soldiers and their family members to identify their special social, emotional, and psychological needs. Retired First Sergeant Williamson now devotes his time to service in his local communities, which includes Columbus, Georgia, Fort Moore, Georgia, and right here in Phoenix City. And he does this as a community leader and a veteran advocate. He is the founder and executive director of the Veterans and Family Assistance Center, a 501c3 organization that provides a comprehensive approach to caring for our veterans and their families by connecting them to essential services and veterans benefits as the veteran advocate. He has assisted over 3,700 veterans. Now I'm gonna ask y'all to give him a hand for that right there. There's 3,700 veterans, their dependents and survivors in filing claims for benefits and he has represented them before the Board of Veterans Appeals. His passion and dedication to service have been the key to his maintaining a 98% success rate in winning all the claims that he has submitted to the Department of Veterans Affairs. Another hand. We are celebrating individuals who are doing extraordinary things in our community and in our world. So without further ado, I ask you to give a huge round of applause for our speaker for this evening, Mr. Dominique Williamson. Tonight I have the distinct pleasure and the assignment to talk about what a humanitarian is. And so I went to Webster <laughs> and I pulled up Webster's next definition and it says, A, humanitarian is a person who is involved in or connected with improving people's lives by reducing suffering. And so as I started thinking about some humanitarians. There were probably about three people that popped into my mind initially, and those three people were Dr. Martin Luther King, Mahatma Gandhi, and then I also talked about uh, uh, Nelson Mandela. And when I started looking at what they accomplished in their lifespan, I saw what a true humanitarian should be. You know, Dr. King, whether it was him fighting for civil rights and doing what he did to springboard us to where we're at right now. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi, when he brought uh, India free from uh, Britain's uh, reign. Uh, Nelson Mandela, 27 years in prison, fought for apartheid, and then did what he did to become the president of South Africa. You know, those are just some great humanitarians. And the more I think about them, you know, they're at my hallmark to where I would strive to be like. But then, I thought about somebody else that may have topped them. And you know, you think, who could have topped those three? I tell you, you know, I read a book one day. 
It was called the Bible. <laughs> and it was a man. I believe he lived about 33 years named Jesus Christ, and he walked. And when he walked on this earth, he did some amazing things. And so tonight, I want to utilize some of his experiences and talk about what it means to be a true humanitarian. And so when I look at what Jesus did, uh, whether it was him healing the sick, uh, causing those that were blind to see, raising the dead, he did a lot of things. But the thing that stands out to me the most is when he was at the Garden of Gethsemane. And it was at that moment I saw where Jesus, God, wrapped in the flesh, wrestled with, do I want to not go to Calvary's cross or should I fulfill the purpose that I'm called for? Mm -hmm. And I think as a humanitarian, we're gonna all have those crossroads because there's gonna come a time where you're gonna be, you're gonna be tired, you're gonna be sick, you just don't want to be bothered by nobody. <laughs> but then you realize it's my personal feeling and what I do not want to do at this moment, my fears, my insecurities, is it enough to stop me from fulfilling my purpose of being that humanitarian? And so when we look at what Jesus did, it was three times in the text you see where he said, if it's your will, allow this cup to pass by me. And then he concluded by saying, but nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And I tell you, as humanitarians, uh, there's going to be some sacrifices that we must make. Mm -hmm. I remember one in particular. I was stationed in uh, Honduras, and we did a lot of uh, service down there, you know, with the military and outside of the military. And one night, it was about two o'clock in the morning, someone knocks on my door and they're in a panic. And I'm tired, it's two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and they said, Dominique, hey, we need you. And I wiped my eyes and I was like, what's going on? They said, there's a soldier that's contemplating the suicide. Now at that moment, Sleep was holding on to me, but my call to duty got the best of me. And so I had the choice of saying, do I succumb to my tiredness and my selfish nature of saying, man, can you go, it's about 500 folks you could have called, but why did you knock on my door? And there was a reason why, and there's a reason why we're here today, is because we have answered the call and people have seen us answer the call. So when there's a call, they're gonna to go to the individuals that they know will answer that call. And so when they knocked on my door, I put on my clothes and I went and sat with the soldier. She was telling me about how she wanted to take her life and she was in a big frantic stage. And I'm sitting to myself, I'm not a licensed counselor, I'm not a psychologist, I have none of those degrees. But what I did have was compassion for my fellow man. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, we had a connection. Mm -hmm. And we sat there from two o'clock to three o'clock mm -hmm. to four o'clock to six o'clock the next morning. And it was in, during that time frame of just conversation and conversing with her and pouring out some personal things that I went through and giving her a reason why she should live. That soldier has lived and she's thriving today. Mm -hmm. Woo! But if I would have said, I'm tired, knock on someone else's door, maybe they can do it better than me. Maybe they have the degrees that I didn't have. But it's something about when God has anointed you to do something. No degree in the world could supersede the anointing of God. And so when we look at what took place in this text, and we see how Jesus was agonizing 
and he was going through. The Bible talked about how bad he was in pain. Uh, there's a medical term called hemohydrosis, to where that when he was praying, his sweat glands burst and blood came to come out where his sweat glands was. Could you imagine going through that mental torment of knowing I gotta go to Calvary's cross. <laughs> it's not gonna be a slow death. It's gonna be something that's gonna agonize. They're gonna pierce my hands, put a crown of thorns on my head. They're gonna beat me 39 stripes, pulling flesh off my back, pouring vinegar on me, ridiculing me. And then all of the friends that I had, they're gonna turn their backs. Mm -hmm. Now, could you imagine what he went through to be the ultimate humanitarian? Mm -hmm. And so I say this as I close. When we decide to pick up this mantle and become a humanitarian, there's a lot more than just the accolades that we receive. There's a lot more than the uh, applause that we get and the pats on our backs. There's going to be some nights that you don't want to get up. There's going to be some phone calls that you want to get. There's going to be some times where the folks that know you the best, that you thought you were tight with, they're going to be the ones that's going to talk about you. And then you're going to find yourself on an island, standing saying, what do I do? Do I cut and run or do I stay in the fight? And I'll tell you this, stay in the fight. Because in staying in the fight, you never know whose life you're going to impact. If I didn't stay in the fight, that young lady could have been dead right now. If Jesus didn't stay in the fight, none of us would have been here right now. You understand? <laughs> so stay in the fight. And I know for some of you asked me to weave in, because I wasn't going to weave this in, but she asked me to weave in a little bit about our organization and to talk about the impact of what we've done. Uh, she mentioned some numbers. She said 3,700 veterans uh, that we've helped. You know, uh, I look at those numbers and numbers, you know, for stats, they always mean something. I can care less about a number because when you're talking to someone one-on-one, -on -one, that's the only number that I'm thinking about at that time. If I can impact that person that's sitting in front of me at that moment, and if the answer is no, I have to go back into my toolbox pull back up some resources and figure out how can I help this person that's sitting in front of me. And I think that's what has what made our organization such a success because when someone says no, we always find a way to say yes. And my wife will tell you, there's been plenty of nights. She'll tell me, put down the iPad and go to sleep. <laughs> If you guys look at my eyes, I had two hours of sleep last night. <laughs> I'm tired, but I'm here. You know, and it's because of the commitment to say I want to serve someone. And when you commit yourself to service, it's going to cause you to burn the midnight oil. It's going to cause you to study when most people are sleeping. It's going to cause you to do things when other folks don't want to do it. But at the end of the day, when you do it, and when you burn the midnight oil and you're able to help somebody, I tell you, that is the greatest feeling ever. You know, and I tell you, as the honorees, I know that you guys have experienced that. And as the audience, we ought to all experience that. Never allow selfishness and fear, doubt, insecurities to stop you from being who God has called you to be. The Bible says that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. We're made in his image. And because we're made in his image, we can do exceeding abundantly above all that anyone could ask or think. Thank you, guys. <laughs>
words with our audience about your beautiful new venue that is open now and ready for people to request time away and retreat and rebuild and regroup and reorganize those type of things. Come and tell them a little bit about what you have to offer and how they can connect with what you're doing in Buena Vista. He became licensed through the Wounded Warrior Project. They actually sent my husband to law school, which helps him um, file evidence-based claims. Because if you're veterans here, you know there's a lot of stories about filing veteran claims. Everybody has an opinion. And everybody was, it will say, do this and do that. But he learned to study the law. So he started studying the law when he was injured um, back in what, 2010. 2010, and he was able to study the law and make his retirement, which was 2012, because they tried to kick him out at like 17 and a half years. And it, everybody who knows Dominique personally knows that he gives 200% to everything that he does. And so he was very disappointed when they tried to kick him out. Um, he was a career soldier. So he began to fight for himself and fight for other wounded vets. Um, a lot of those wounded vets from the WTB are still his friends to this day. Um, so that's a little bit about the history of the Veterans and Family Assistance Center. And he got the name the Veterans and Family Assistance Center from the SBAC, which was the Soldiers and Family Assistance Center. And he came home one day and he calls me by my nickname. He said, Kesey, I know the name of my business. <laughs> it's going to be the Veterans and Family Assistance Center. And I'm going to help veterans in this fight. Um, we knew, uh, you know, God puts you in situations where you realize the intensity and the enormous uh, strain of, of, of something through experience. Like if you've never experienced homelessness, your passion might not be for homeless people. But um, Dominique experienced severe, severe trauma um, during that incident and um, during his exit of the military and he realized if they did me like this, they did everybody better than like this. <laughs> and so that drove his passion. Um, and it's very important to, for you to stay in the fight. I, I love that message because the passion that you have that God put inside of you is for a reason. Um, you might have found that passion through incident or accident. But once it's in you, go after that passion with all you have because you will save lives. You will make that impact. So in 2016, we started the Veterans and Family Assistance Center officially. He became licensed claims agent. And that in itself was a job. So we, we kept going and kept learning how to be an independent agent on his own and on his admin. <laughs> so that in itself was a challenge. But God blessed us. For years, he looked for um, he looked for a facility to trans tra transition homeless vets, and we know that's coming in the near future. But the Lord blessed us with this beautiful property before that could happen. So another claims agent, um, who's his friend, found this beautiful property. Um, it has lakes and homes on the property. Um, we just released it for Airbnb, and it's called Tranquility Gardens. So. <laughs> The website is www.thetranquilitygardens.com, so you can view it. But we have veterans down there um, to relax. We do a lot of community service with our local school, Davis Elementary. We bring the teachers out there to relax. Um, it could be booked by families, but he followed his page. He'll be having veteran events down there. Um, and it's a beautiful little piece of heaven. It is the most serene and tranquil and inviting place. It's called the Tranquility Gardens on the web. Take a look at it, it's amazing. And we stumbled upon this uh, through God's divine intervention because it's truly a blessing. Um, everyone who comes 
um, realizes that, gosh, this place is so relaxing, it's just what I needed. The plans for Tranquility and Gardens include a mental health facility. It includes a veteran farm. So we are very excited about the future of the Veterans and Family Assistance Center. Um, that's why the fight that you're in matters because everything and everybody will not stay with you. They'll be with you for a season. They'll come with you in the beginning, but stay in it for the long haul because I promise you, I promise you, God is on your side. He's going to continue to release the strength, the people, the resources, and everything that you need to get to where God is calling you to be to serve other humans. And it is one of the hardest and the greatest things that you can ever do at the same time is serve other people. So, you know, thank you so much. <laughs> Just like charity does. So consider that as you go on your way after this particular event. But I would like to now introduce to you, I mentioned this gentleman a little bit earlier, and we kind of talked about how we got to know each other and those type of things. But he reminded me just the other day, we met in what, 2014? That's correct. And he's like, I don't really know many people that I've known since 2014. And I thought about that. And many times, we don't know many people. I mean, I think about childhood. I don't know many people from my childhood. I've moved all over the place. So it is important to build strong, healthy relationships. And even if those relationships are just for a short period of time, just know that there's always value in those relationships because one of the things that Dr. Rossa Mims um, speaks to is that there's no, no such thing as happenstance. And there is no such thing as that when you are connecting with other individuals. There's something that you're supposed to share and experience together. So this is something to think about as we go on with this evening. But this gentleman, we stay connected. And I, I told you about the telephone call. But, you know, as you consider just why you're supposed to be connected with an individual, you start thinking about the various interactions and those type of things. And I saw something really amazing in the work that he was doing when I was living in Atlanta and how he was providing housing for those individuals who were 
you know, unhoused. You know, I'm a homeless um, advocate, so I don't like using that term terminology homeless so much. I know why it's there, and we have to have a certain, um, I guess, word or phrases that we use to put people in categories for various reasons. We gotta use it for funding, we gotta use it for all kinds of different things. But I, I kinda like to use unhoused more than homeless because I think about, you know, when I personally was homeless, the term, the word, made me feel almost hopeless. It's like they went together, homeless and hopeless. And as I considered my situation, and I finally named it a life transition, when everybody would ask, oh, I'm just experiencing a life transition. <laughs> that felt better, it sounded better, and it actually served me better because transitions happen. They're gonna happen. I don't care in what phase of life you're in, transitions happen. And so transitions was part of what this gentleman was doing in this organization was helping people through the transaction. So transition. So I would like to now um, just invite the co-partner <laughs> in this wonderful event to come up and share with you a little bit about his organization that puts on the Humanitarian Award Gala. And he will also shift from there into the award presentation. So let's give a hand for Mr. Leonard Morgan. Good evening, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Um, first of all, I want to thank God for allowing us to be here today. I want to thank uh, the Chancellor for allowing us to come in your beautiful facility to hold this gala. Um, I thank God for people like Brissandra, who I've known over 10 years now. Uh, I also want to thank all the awardees for what you do in the community to make it better. You know, um, when Brissandra was talking about, you know, uh, us meeting and uh, how I stand before you today to talk about that is that uh, I had an experience, I had an encounter with God where I said I went 92% with you, 95, 98 before I leave from here. I want to go all the way with you. You know, and right then and there my life changed. I lost everything. You know, and in the midst of that I wanted to say I was just kidding God. You know, say you must stop that, you know. But that was the beginning of a wonderful love affair for me and God. You know, and it has taken me uh, through a lot of places. I've been able to be of service in the community. And when uh, I was asked to come here today, uh, I run an organization called Georgia Vet Fest. Georgia Vet Fest is an organization where we honor our military and their families for their courageous service and sacrifice for this country. We often hear people talk about the veteran, but a lot of times the family get left, left out the equation. And because our advocacy is for mental health, whatever falls on the head falls on the body. You know, so there are families that's going through the same thing as the veteran is going through it. So that's, that was one of our main causes is to uh, advocate for veterans, advocate for mental health. You know. So many of my comrades, when you look at about 70 to almost 80% of my comrades suffer with some form of mental health, whether it is PTSD, substance abuse, uh, anxiety, depression, 22 veterans will take their lives today. Mm -hmm. MST, military sexual trauma, 80% of the women who've been in Afghanistan and Iraq have been raped mm -hmm. by not only their own soldiers, but by civilians as well. Mm -hmm. And then we got TBI, mm -hmm. you know, and one of the things that I've realized is very early, I cannot be all things to all people. Mm -hmm. That's the reason advocacy is one thing, but also having partnerships and collaborations is what's important. You know, uh, they said, used to say it takes a whole village, right? It still takes a whole village. 
you know. And what we have done is we have done, we have hosted 82 events in and around the uh, metro area of Atlanta mm -hmm. in the last 10 years. Everything from uh, car shows, 5K runs, uh, mental health conferences, uh, you name it, breakfast with Santa, we've done that for mm -hmm. breakfast and their families. See, my thing is, if you got people out there advocating for everything else, mm -hmm. you know, whether it is uh, cancer, breast cancer, you know, um, advocacy for uh, prostate cancer, whatever, what we have did is created a platform where we can bring all of those people in the community who do not have a platform on our platform, therefore giving our community the services that they need. Uh, I'm going to read a little bit about what we have done as far as it concerns the humanitarian war. Uh, we have, today we are announcing our new Heroes United campaign, which includes frontliners uh, to those events and activities that we have hosted for veterans throughout the 12 years. The coronavirus has devastated the world and this country. It has taken the lives of hundreds of thousands of Americans and has left this nation out with fear of who will be next. VetFest has decided to include Heroes United across the nation to participate in our 2023 through 2025 campaign of events. We want to foster unity, healing, and camaraderie as they rebuild their lives. These are the people who makes America better, not great. Heroes United across the nation, what are people that we're serving? These people are the ones that help our country stay on, on track in the face of adversity. This organization has promoted holistic and wellness to those who suffer from PTSD, MST, suicide, depression, anxiety, uh, PTSD, I'm sorry, TBI, substance abuse, and advocate for frontliners and their families. We believe that through this accomplishment that we'll put together a task force assisting them to transition back into building holistic and wellness model consisted of total health. I'm the founder of Georgia Vet Feds. And I state that it is a privilege and an honor to honor our frontliners in their, in their service. Mm -hmm. The fighters of the coronavirus, the teachers, the nurses, the policemen, the firemen, the ENTs, the cashiers, the food service, the manufacturers, the truck drivers. <coughs> However, to fill this task, like to fill this task, this support the veterans and their families as well as the frontliners, we need help. We need donations, we need partners, and we need sponsors. Mm -hmm. With that being said, what we have done is we've created this uh, campaign where we have already did 185 humanitarian awards since 19, I'm sorry, since 2014. We are now looking at going nationwide where we're trying to offer a thousand of these awards in cities and states around this country. And having this opportunity to come here and move that number, that needle, to 189. And we're having another event uh, October the 21st in Atlanta, Georgia. It's called the Summer Sling Vet Fest, where we will be honoring 12 awardees at that event. So what I would like for you guys to do is get behind us, support us in what it is that we do, coming to your communities, coming to your states. And this is the thing, the people that I just uh, mentioned in our communities are people who make our communities great. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the teachers, mm -hmm. the nurses, the cashier, those that have went uh, as unsung heroes, they deserve to be recognized mm -hmm. as well. So here at VetFest, we're going to do our part to make sure that that happens. Mm -hmm. And with your help, that we, we can do that. I thank you guys for coming out and supporting us today. I thank for Sandra for the wonderful work you're doing here. I applaud you, and I look forward to us moving forward and doing much more together. Thank you.
read the bios of the honorees tonight. So please give them an applause in advance. Also give the families an applause. Again, we'd like to present this humanitarian award to Mr. Dominique Williamson. Thank you. Dr. Humber attended Kendrick High School and holds degrees from Troy University, Columbus State University, and Aspen University. Her expertise spans a wide range of areas, including being a reading specialist, educational technology, time management, professional development, leadership, and self-care. Throughout her career, Dr. Humber, affectionately known as Dr. Ann, She's received numerous awards and recognition for her work as a mentor, life coach, producer, instructor, writer, and educational technologist. Dr. Ann is deeply committed to the various local and national initiatives that focus on strengthening children and marriages. She is particularly passionate about writing children's books that facilitate conversations between parents and children about their current issues in school, communities, and the home. As an active member of Kappa Alpha Sigma, Columbus, Georgia alumni, chapter of Sigma Gamma Rho Incorporated, Dr. Ann chairs an annual Protect Your Mind Yoga and Walk event to raise awareness about mental illness. And I have been privileged to attend one. This is a wonderful event. Do your best to try to attend one. Dr. Ann is also an advocate for showing love and spreading kindness everywhere and every day. Through her podcasting, vlogging, workshops, webinars, she inspires others to engage in meal prep, purposeful planning, exercise, yoga, and self-care. While Dr. Ann finds great fulfillment in inspiring and helping others, she is most proud of her role as a wife, a mother, and a grandmother. Let's give her a hand. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Ian.
right. Our next honoree tonight is Miss Vonda Zavala. Come on up. Ms. Vonda Zavala. <laughs> she is the coordinator of student and business development at Troy University, Phoenix City Campus. She's known by thousands of students, community members, and as a trusted servant leader, Ms. Vonda also serves as the club president of Troy Riverfront Toastmasters Club. In this role, she exercises her passion for communication and leadership excellence. Outside of her work at Troy University, she serves on the board of directors of the Mother Mary Mission in Phoenix City, Alabama. She also witnessed the firsthand challenges of veteran women as they face when they served, or as she served, 10 years active duty in the Army, followed by 11 years in the Army Reserves. That's it? I okay. <laughs> for all your service. for Fort Moore Soldier Recovery Unit. He was born in Savannah, Georgia, and he grew up in the various counties in Atlanta, Georgia area. He's a graduate of Cedar Grove High School in Ellenwood, Georgia, and a Columbia College alumnus. As a retired U.S. Army's first sergeant, John was deployed several times to Iraq and received a bronze medal during his 20 year, 22 years of military service. Impressive. Thank you. And if we could, could we have all the honorees
chair and just put it in your hands, just like this here for a moment. And when I thought about this, this is a yoga block. If you've never seen this thing before, that's what it's called as a yoga block. But I thought of it as a building block. And I started thinking about what does it require for a humanitarian to really have a huge impact in their community. And it means you're taking one block, building on top of it, putting another block, and the, all the blocks are each and every one of you guys here today. But I want you to consider this block in another way. In yoga, we use this as support when we need a little bit of extra in order to get into a certain pose. Now I can get down here on the floor and do one for you because I'm a yoga instructor too. <laughs> and so I, I don't want to do that because I'm dressed up and everything, but I'm prepared to strike a yoga pose at any point in time. <laughs> Listen, my friends up here, we, we all like to do some yoga. But I want to do a little yoga right now with you guys. If you have your block in your hand, extend your hands out with your yoga block. And what you're doing right here is just extending your arms and having your yoga block here. Now, we're going to just gently move our arms up, bringing our block up over our head. And we're going to slowly bring our block back down. This time, we're going to go back up to the top. Take a deep breath here and turn over to the left side. Just glide over to the side. <laughs> back to the center. And now over to the right side. And back to the center. And bring your block right back down to the foot. So it might seem like you didn't do much of anything, but when we do this exercise with some people who haven't had mobility in their shoulders for a long time, and they see that they can glide their hands up and actually bring them up to the top, they're like, I haven't done this in years. It's because you're not trying to do it alone. You have the support of something being held in your hands. Your two hands are pressing together and you're using the force of multiple parts of your body coming together to accomplish a goal. You can do it so much easier when you have support than you can if you were trying to do it with one arm all by yourself. So keep that in mind as we continue to do great things in our community. We're not talking about going somewhere else <laughs> and doing something. We're talking about being a humanitarian in your own community. Let's do that and let's get excited about it. Not just what we do as humanitarians, but be excited about sharing what you see happening with other individuals that are doing great things. And it's become a custom that I close out this special time that we have together with a little song. Yeah, and so I'm going to ask our honorees to have a seat as I give them a little serenade. <laughs>
Thank you. 